going to talk about concealed carry, and our guest is Eve Flanagan, a concealed carry instructor and a writer in the industry. So, Eve, you, you've been teaching concealed carry for quite a bit of time now? Yeah, a little over seven years, actively teaching, working in the gun industry for 10 years plus, and been a shooter my whole life. Do you, you find that, because I teach concealed carry, a fair percentage of people who come into concealed carry may have never shot a gun in their life. That makes it rather challenging, particularly when you put them in a class that have, are more experienced, too. That is true, although I always tell those folks who are usually also a little nervous and, and let me know that on, on, a, on a break because they're worried about it, I say, don't worry, you have no bad habits in your shooting. And uh, I think that is the first thing that I do to make them feel better. <laughs> One of the interesting things about concealed carry, and, and I tell this to people when they call and say they want to take the class, I go, if you call an instructor and say you want to take concealed carry, what gun do they recommend and they tell you, you probably don't want to go to that instructor. They don't know how you live. They don't know, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, do you find that uh, sort of a challenge with people to convince them, oh, my brother-in-law told me to buy this or whatever? That's a really common complaint, especially from female shooters who frequently get advice like, oh, just buy a snub nose hammerless revolver because it's simple, uh, which is really quite an insult if you think about it. Absolutely. But your experience with guns, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, again, I, I, I'm never prescriptive in telling folks you should carry this brand or you know, th this caliber or, or whatever. It really does depend on the person. But I, I do think there are some sort of universal uh, commonalities that folks should look sure. at with a handgun. So, go, go, for instance, what? What do you tell students? Um, what I tell a student is, you know, first of all, they've got to have something that is concealable. A lot of sure. folks are attracted to a, you know, a great big full-size pistol. And indeed, as, as you know, they're easier to shoot. The gun itself takes up more recoil. A lot of times the manipulation is easier, but it, when it comes to concealing that gun, they find it's very uncomfortable, if not impossible. And so they give up and they don't carry it all, which is the last thing we want when our intent is to protect our lives. Yeah, the, I, there's nothing worse than being a concealed carry holder not taking a gun that day, and that ends up being the day you wish you had. The, the other issue is between revolver and, and semi-automatic. Uh, What's your, what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are, it, it, my experience has been uh, that after most people get a good trial of both, talking about beginner people, after they sure. get a good trial of, of one or the other platform, most of them prefer the, the semi, uh, simply because of ease of operation. You know, what they were told was simple. Not, not, with revolver is not necessarily so when you start to think about a 12 pound trigger pull for instance and a lot of felt recoil you know beginning with about the 38 cartridge um, there's going to be a lot of that recoil transferred to the shooter whereas uh, there are dozens of choices in the semi-auto category that are very effective for self-defense softer recoil and easy to handle and the industry is just answering the demand for easy to handle guns now in spades yeah. in the last couple of years. The other thing that is challenging is holsters um, and women you know aren't made the same way men are so even if they want a holster it, it can be challenging uh, and there's purse options and there's all kinds of things. I've had students show up and they, they literally have a law enforcement holster. That's what they think they're going to carry with a bail where you got to do this and that. Well, well, how do you deal with that with holsters? I may upset a few people because I do get a little opinionated in this way, but please understand my first priority is safety. Of course. And uh, that people don't have an unintended or negligent discharge from their holster or associated with that holster. Any, any good holster, whether it's concealed or not, uh, first of all, needs to protect that trigger guard sure. so that nothing can get inside there and accidentally activate that trigger. Uh, secondly, it needs to hold the gun in such a way that it can't possibly fall out. You know, there's got to be good retention. And I, don't 
don't get me wrong, I believe in a fair market, uh, but there are some holsters marketed today that just don't meet those criteria. Uh, and, and unfortunately, a lot of those are marketed to women. And so I try to steer people away from that. Begin with those criteria and then figure out what's going to fit you and your body. And, and again, it's like, again, you, I, I can never be completely prescriptive because I don't know what you do every day for exactly. work or with your right. kids or your dog or, or whatever. Um, that can change. But certainly a, a holster that will let you access the gun quickly. After that, when we start to talk about safety first and then preferences, uh, something that will let you get to the gun rapidly, maybe even get a firing grip on the gun while it's still in concealment. Of course, that does not mean finger on trigger. That means finger uh, on the frame, okay? Uh, you know, those kind of criteria are secondary considerations. Sure. My partner, Gretchen, made the observation when Illinois first got concealed carry. She said, if you're gonna conceal carry, you're gonna have wardrobe considerations. That's right. And you know, I laughed, I thought she was joking. She's not joking. It turns out to be dead right, doesn't it? Right, it does. And, and it, even for men or women, Absolutely. men are considering con uh, concealing in a place where they can get to the gun quickly. We all have to sort of dress around the firearm right. in, a, what, in a way that's appropriate for our daily lives and the way that we work and play. And uh, yeah, I, think I decided I would give up shirts that tuck in, for example, and I used to wear those all the time in order to get the gun off off of an external holster and onto an on-body holster. So, it, you know, and it's the other thing I tell folks is don't blow your, blow your entire budget on the first holster you buy, because uh, oh, it's yeah. more than likely you're going to go through three or four or a dozen until you find that one or two that are your really trusted ones for every day in, in your own lifestyle. So any any tip for someone who's thinking of going and getting a concealed carry permit? Any thoughts? A tip for uh, if they're gonna go. What, are they, their, yeah, what, what, do you, what would you tell someone to say, I'm thinking of doing it? Thinking of doing it. Um, I, I would tell them just get the education, uh, learn safe gun handling, get the education, and then you know, some people, once they realize the uh, legal and emotional impacts of potentially of using deadly force, sometimes they say, hey, I'm not ready to do that. And that's okay. True. Um, but I think not knowing the actual information, it, it's not okay to make that assumption before you are completely understand the ins and outs. So go ahead and get the education and then make that decision of whether you are mentally, physically, spiritually prepared for self-defense. Yeah, and I think that's a good point because as I always tell people, once you pull the trigger, a lot of people think that is solving a problem. When you pull the trigger, a whole lot of new problems and new start. new problems begin. Exactly. exactly, yeah. You're always better off avoiding if you can. Exactly, yeah. And that's, um, a, a lot of folks, especially women, don't realize how much power they hold in terms okay. of avoiding encounters simply by exercising situational awareness on an everyday basis and making it part of our daily habits. Um, you know, simply by learning good communication techniques that tend to diffuse and, and escape from situations rather than get in deeper. And that goes for men and women. Absolutely, absolutely. So if folks want to get a hold of you, how do they do that? Um, folks could hit me up on my Instagram. It is eshootertutor, like T-U-T-O-R, like teacher. So eshootertutor um, on, on Instagram. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. E. Flanagan. And for SHOT Show TV, I'm David Lombardo.